Hello, everybody. Welcome on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day to a little rogue creator's watch. Um, just because of schedules, and I really wanted to chat with these creators. And today, and I'm flying solo today, unfortunately. Um, and Heidi I'm Robinson, my cohort. We like we like to say cohort now instead of co-host. It just sounds more fun. Um, uh, she is not available at this time, but I am here with Derek and Catherine. So can you guys just um, start? Just introduce yourselves and, in general, the the work you love to do, and how you got started with Napoleon Bon Appetit. Sure, uh, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Derek Hauk. Uh, I am the uh, co-creator and writer of Napoleon Bon Appetit, and um, I started out in uh, just doing community regional theater around here. Uh, my very first show was You're in Town the Musical, and um, slowly moved from theater into web series, and uh, have had the uh, opportunity to uh, produce and act uh, in uh, both. And Catherine? Sure. Well, I'm Catherine. I'm an actress and uh, producer, filmmaker, living in Los Angeles. And I mean, I, my background is theatrical, you know, studying theater and doing theater and then bringing it into uh, making your own content for the web simply because it's extremely accessible. Um, so I find the work that I like to do um, with the web specifically is anything that just is really inspiring. You know, you get an idea, a kernel of an idea, like with Napoleon Bon Appetit, it was literally the title that sent us running and creating it. So I just, I, I chase inspiration, I guess. That, that's a great way to do it. <laughs> and how did, uh, you guys produced a show together a couple of years ago, um, and when, what was kind of the time frame of the idea for Napoleon Bon Appetit and then producing it? And if you haven't seen it, check out um, I started watching season one, and it is a cooking show with Napoleon and a, a wench. Is that? Is yeah, the kitchen wench. Yeah. And some guests. There are some guests along the way. Um, so yeah, from idea to execution, how did? Well, um, Catherine can talk about the initial idea because it came from her and her father. Um, so if you want to talk about that real quickly. Oh well, sure. Um, yeah, basically I was just sitting with my dad who is a story guy. He just comes up with ideas all the time and we were talking about Derek and we're just, we came up with a lot of ideas that we really liked for him for comedic characters, but Napoleon Bon Appetit stuck because of the title <laughs> and the idea of this, you know, kitchen wench and just the whole fun that Derek and I could have doing it. So that That's was the much. initial idea. It was very simple, <laughs> you know. So she presented me with that idea, and then um, I liked it a lot, um, and uh, decided to write a script out of it. Mm -hmm. it, it we ended up with uh, seven episodes that first season. Uh, we got the script written, and our pre-production was about six weeks. Um, yeah, and, and that, yeah, sorry, that was the, the it was six weeks mainly because we wanted to go with the SAG New Media Agreement, and that takes time. It could have theoretically have been done quicker, um, but we had to wait for the SAG papers. Cool. So what, I mean, you both created in, in both fields, and that's something, like I said before, on, we're on the air. Mm -hmm. It's been a really fun venture for me going, um, just exploring the new web industry. I mean, new. How many years? We'll see. <laughs> but. Uh, and just seeing all the similarities between all of, these, all of these independent artists. So what is it that really attracted you to doing Napoleon Bon Appetit as a web series? Mm. And how has it kind of been, how is, basically how has it been working for you? What, what's been similar to past experiences? What's been different? And um, what have you learned? Well, the surprising thing is it's actually cheaper to do it as a web series than it would be to try and put it up in a little black box theater. Yeah. Uh, we we helped produce a play called uh, A View From Here, and that ended up being, uh, just for the short run that we did it, more than double the cost of both of our uh, seasons so far. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and I would say, too, that, I mean, I, I love theater, and when you can do it, I mean, you know, it's a great experience, but the 
bar in general to finishing a project is much lower, I think, with web content, partly because it can be done so cheaply, but also because you can call in more favors, you know, and work with a really unique group of people. Uh, with theater, it's a little hard to call in for, like, free theater space, you know? It's a lot easier to call in for a free camera or free lighting, you know? So that I guess that affects the bottom line of the price issue, but um, it just seems that, like, from idea to creation, web content is just much easier to, to follow through and finish than maybe setting up a theater and, you know, the rehearsal process is so hard to manage schedules, and with you know, something you're filming, just people know you're filming on, like, 10 days, but rehearsals are 30 days, you know, so, yeah. And what, was there something you felt, um, or how did you try to market it, how, once you had the product, and once you were, were you had it posted, how often did you post, how did you decide that? Well, Derek can speak to that, because that was his job. <laughs> yeah, um, the biggest thing I did was uh, before every season, um, I put out a press release, uh, basically uh, touting what was unique about our series uh, for the second season. It was mainly touting who our new guest stars were uh, for that second season. Um, just essentially what we had to offer, why we were unique. Um, I, a lot of Napoleon Bon Appetit is the image of Napoleon holding you know, a uh, kitchen mallet instead of a, a sword. Um, it's a very image-based uh, brand. And so trying to leverage that as much as possible because I think the idea of Napoleon in a kitchen is hilarious. And I think <laughs> it's uh, something that, you know, either people immediately go, yes, that's a great idea, or they go, ah, that's not for me. So I just need to, you know, expose people to the fact that there is a web series out there with Napoleon in a kitchen. <laughs> and what um, what have you been finding from the audience reaction? Who who's been really really digging it? Well, uh, besides friend and family. <laughs> yes, friends and family. Of they um, love it. <laughs> there are people like people who speak French who uh, love how atrocious uh, Napoleon's French is because I uh, don't speak a word of it. <laughs> Uh, but also, it, it's uh, found a, a place with people who, because we have real recipes on every episode, and uh, so people can actually, if they go by what we say and not what we do, they yes. can see the uh, food in the episode. Well, that's and, good to know. <laughs> yeah. So it's good for the people that the foodies who uh, you know are looking for uh, tasty things to eat. Cool. That's that. That's actually a really a very good distinction. Uh, to know about before you watch it. You can actually make it, just don't, not the way you're doing it. Fantastic. Uh, what, I mean, with food uh, in a film set, I'm sure there's lots of craziness that could happen. What, did anything just totally go awry? Well, food uh, is definitely our biggest expense. Um, yeah, actually, I can tell, tell you some horror stories. <laughs> Well, I, I guess this is food related, but um, in one episode I have a, a vat of pig's blood, which, you know, is fake blood, but it was supposed to dump all over me, and I mean, totally amateurish mistake, but I made it out of laundry detergent, um, so of course that was in my eyes, going to my nose and my mouth, and we only had one take. So, and I was supposed to get very, very angry. So the net result was that I actually passed out during the take <laughs> very shortly. And when you watch it, I, like, stumble backwards and hit the counter. And that woke me up, and I just carried on with the scene. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. easily the most yeah. surreal moment. And the, the wonderful thing is we have it on tape. It's in the episode. You can actually watch her pass out, regain consciousness, and stay in character. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that was Completely my fault. I was the producer in charge of the blood, so I'm glad I suffered. <laughs> and no one else. <laughs> what was the recipe? What were you making? Uh, blood uh, pudding. Blood yes. pudding. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get to blood pudding, and I'm sad to say I'm going to watch it just to see you pass. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was, it was insane. It was insane to go through, for little, sure. <laughs> with a, a little less dangerous flub. Um, I mean, essentially, a lot of our gags 
Uh, particularly, we have about one gag each season that can only be done in one take because it's a big mess and uh, you know there's a lot of cleanup afterwards. In season one, that was uh, a gag with flour. I had a uh, whole bag of flour dumped on my head. Mm -hmm. And so that one, we only had one shot at it to make sure it turned out right. And uh, luckily, uh, it ended up being something we could use. I think there was a booming shot that we had to remove digitally. Uh, yeah. But uh, we've been very fortunate with our food in that we've had no major catastrophes that we couldn't make up. Yeah, ice cream was interesting because, of course, it melts faster than you can shoot it. So. Yes. You know, we, we bought like two or three times the amount of food you'd actually need for the recipes just because you have to keep, you know, remaking the recipes halfway through, but yeah. And did you have someone for continuity or was it really just you guys and the, the crew? Uh, well, we shot on a Canon 5D, so uh, we were actually able to go back after each take and review the footage uh, for continuity uh, yeah. and any other, um, you know, reasons we might need to, you know, someone moved a certain way or uh, just to review angles and make sure we got the footage we needed. So that was very helpful um, as far as being able to make adjustments on set uh, based on what we had already recorded. Mm -hmm. Great. Well then I want, um, I always like to leave with a future question. Uh, if Is there something you're working on now that you want to talk about or what is your dream project? What's something you would jump at the chance to do? Well, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I can uh, really talk about at the moment. I've got several projects in production. We, including in that, is uh, there are plans for a third season of Napoleon Bon Appetit. Uh, we are uh, waiting on a kitchen, actually, uh, <laughs> uh, which will be incorporated into the storyline, but we lost our original kitchen, unfortunately. So, uh, Napoleon has to move to a new location. Uh, but I'm also uh, writing uh, another web series. Uh, I'm looking to shoot this summer as well. And in my back pocket, I'm still working on a feature script that has been uh, slowly but surely coming along. Um, I would jump um, to do any sort of period work. I think that'd be fun or sci-fi. I don't no, I mean, web content, that's more expensive, so those opportunities are rare or hard to pull off. Um, right now, I'm meeting with a friend once a week, a girlfriend, and we're, we're just playing around with filming these little videos called Hags and Bags. <laughs> and anyways, we just, they're really short snippets of everyday life, and we wear bags over our heads with, like, eyes cut off and, like, hot outfits. <laughs> I mean, this is like, I, I have these ideas and I run with them and, you know, see what they look like and then maybe release them or not, you know? If you do, I'll totally watch Hags with Bags. Awesome. <laughs> of course. This beautiful girl and she covers her face with a bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you want to be done. Well, palette. You want to be done. Palette. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Making the time, uh, making the out hangouts, and I think my connection's a, getting a little snappy. So um, uh, I think this was an awesome chance to just talk to you guys, hear a little bit more behind what goes on outside of the kitchen of Napoleon Bon Appetit. <laughs> Definitely check it out. There's some really fun episodes, and as we learned, you can actually follow the recipes. Just not what they're doing. Just do you have them? Pay recipes? attention to Napoleon. Do you have them posted anywhere? The specific. Uh, yes, actually, uh, as part of our distribution agreement with 2020 Productions, we uh, posted recipes for each episode uh, next to uh, in the description of their uh, pages on YouTube. So uh, if you visit Napoleon uh, Bon Appetit on YouTube, you can see a recipe underneath uh, each video. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So check it out, Napoleon Bon Appetit. Have a wonderful rest of your holiday if this is a lovely day off. I've seen a lot of people at the beach, which is nice, um, on the West Coast. Thanks again, Derek and Catherine. And you can follow them um, on Twitter as well. It's just uh, Derek Hoik. How do you say your last name? Uh, Hauk. Hauk. At Derek Hauk and at Catherine Brownie. Yeah. <laughs> Brown with an I at the end. Um, and check out Napoleon Bon Appetit.